Howdy campers! Today we're going to talk about oysters. Oysters are my favorite animal because there's so much more than meets the eye. A lot of people think of oysters as just the shell. They have this beautiful shell that has a purple spot right here. You can always tell if, an oyster, if it's an oyster because they have a purple spot right here. It's called their muscle scar. That's where the actual animal will attach to the shell. Now, seashells that you find on the seashore are all made from an animal. Clams will make clam shells or seashells. Oysters will make oyster shells, etc., etc. There's so many different types of animals that are actually making these shells. They make this, these shells from uh, calcium carbonate that's pulled from the water. So these animals will actually pull calcium carbonate from the water. Now, oysters will start their lives out as a planktonic organism. Planktonic means a, anything that cannot resist the water current. So anything that's completely at the mercy of the current. Whenever the current goes to the right, the oyster goes to the right. When the current goes to the left, the oyster goes to the left. Because whenever they're born, they're very tiny. They're about the size of the tip of your pencil. Very, very tiny animals. So whenever these animals are born and they're floating through the water column, all planktonic, just drifting, they're slowly building up their shell and they're getting heavier and heavier. When they get heavy enough to go down to the bottom, they find a hard surface and anything that's a hard surface in the ocean can be a habitat. They'll find a hard surface and they'll use their muscle, uh, muscular foot to kind of create this concrete substance and sit down somewhere. And once they sit down somewhere, they will stay there for their entire lives. So the oyster will make this concrete substance, sit down and stay there for their entire life. We call that type of animal a sessile organism, an animal that is non-moving for their entire life. It would be like if I planted myself here in this spot and had to stay here for my entire life, right here. Now I like to say whenever oysters are choosing a spot, do they, you think they wanna be all alone in the middle of nowhere, uh, on the sandy bottom, maybe there's a rock there and they're just gonna hang out? Or do you think they wanna be by their BOFs, their best oyster friends? Absolutely they wanna be by their best oyster friends. Oysters were gather up in oyster reefs. They'll all set on each other. They'll set on rocks, they'll set on jetties, they'll set on coke cans, and they'll set on other oysters. Anything that is a hard surface can be a habitat. So once they sit down somewhere, they're gonna be there their whole life. And oysters will make these oyster reefs that are, are uh, so far along the coast and have a lot of benefit for the island, especially Galveston Island, um, and for the ocean. So they'll sit down on top of each other and they will become, um, uh, they'll start to grow. So they'll sit down somewhere and they'll start to grow and they'll slowly start to grow and build up that shell. Um, and oysters actually will all start their lives as males and at about an inch they'll actually switch their gender to a female. It's a lot more beneficial to have more females in the environment because you have more eggs. Then the um, males and females will release their genetic material into the water column. It's called broadcast spawning. Their genetic material will mix and create new baby oysters and they'll do the same process. Now we have two different types of planktonic organisms that we call. We have holoplankton or holoplankton where they spend their whole lives as plankton. So that would be your jellyfish, that would be your copepods like plankton from SpongeBob and a couple others. And then you have plankton called maroplankton. That would be like baby crabs, baby oysters, baby octopus, things that start their lives out as this planktonic stage because they're either really tiny or just there's a benefit to drift. And then they grow out of that stage. We call that plankton maroplankton, where they're plankton today, but not too marrow. Get it? Oysters are in phylum mollusca. In order to be in phylum mollusca, oysters must have the ability to produce a shell so they can have a shellibration. They must have a mantle, a visceral mass, a muscular foot, and a soft body. And oysters do fulfill all those requirements. Their shell on the outside has two sides. We call this type of shell a bivalve. So this type of animal would be a bivalve. There's two sides of the shell. 
The oyster has two sides of their shell so they can hold tight whenever the water is uh, low. These guys are intertidal species. So whenever the water is low, they want to hold tight with their shell, hold as, enough water in for them to survive that period where the water is really low and maybe even underneath the oyster uh, so they're dry and exposed. And whenever the water uh, goes up, whenever the tide is high, the oysters can open their shell and be able to eat and filter plankton. Now oysters uh, do have this shell that will open and close and will open and close on a hinge. This hinge is called the umbo. Everyone make your muscle. So we have a hinge in our arm that we can move our uh, arm back and forth. It's card called our elbow. Oysters have an umbo. So that's a really great way of remembering that. Now, like I said, oysters will make their own shell and they'll make it out of this stuff called calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is naturally in the ocean and they'll take it, absorb it, and be able to put more and more layers on their shell. You can tell how old an oyster is by the, the layers uh, and how big it has grown with all the calcium carbonate in the water. And they have growing periods and they kind of have chill out periods, so they don't always uh, grow constantly, but they do grow as much as there is calcium carbonate in the water and as there is time. Underneath this beautiful shell that oysters have, they do have a whole body. They have a soft body. So whenever we look at an oyster, we can see um, that purple muscle scar on the outside of the shell. Now every oyster will have this purple muscle scar. That's how it attaches to that oyster. So anytime you see that purple muscle scar, you know that that is an oyster. Now another requirement to be in phyla mollusca is to have a mantle. This mantle in squid will look like the kind of outside covering. Um, same with the octopus, it kind of looks like their head, the back of their head. Um, but mantle in oysters is the outside covering of all of their body parts. So all of the internal organisms are covered in this mantle. And the mantle in the oyster is a little bit special. Now oysters do have gills. Uh, they do have gills and fish use gills to breathe. Sharks use gills to breathe. But oysters don't use gills necessarily to breathe. They actually use their uh, mantle right here to breathe. They have what's called subcutaneous respiration. Subcutaneous respiration. Subcutaneous respiration is whenever they breathe through their skin. So this mantle is actually where they will actually be absorbing oxygen into their body so their blood can pump oxygenated blood throughout their body. Right here is the oyster's muscle. Now we have a muscle that can push and pull, right? We have a muscle that can push, we have a muscle that can pull. Oysters only have a muscle that can pull. They want to pull tight that oyster shell whenever they are in low tide and hold that water in. But whenever they are ab uh, above, above water, yeah, so whenever the water is higher, they just release that muscle. And the oyster shell will only open just a smidgen. That way enough water can flow through, but they're still protected. Are you ready to see what's on the inside of the oyster? If you have ever eaten an oyster, I'm about to show you what you actually ate. Are you ready? One, two, three. Ah! Oysters are animals. They do have all the body parts that normal animals do. They have a heart, they have a liver, they have a stomach, they have intestines. These are the oyster's gills. And what the gills do is they kind of make this little motion, kind of like playing a piano. Um, they trill along um, and they bring food towards through this little area called a palp right here and I'll explain what that is in just a moment. To their mouth, through their stomach, through their intestines, and out their body. So this is where they take in food. This is where they release food. So if oysters are taking in food right here and releasing food right here and the water current is coming this way, what do you think happens sometimes? They eat their own poop. Oysters poop is delicious and nutritious. Gross. Oysters will redigest their poop maybe two or three times because whenever they're eating all this scrumptious plankton, a lot of times they don't get all the nutrients out of their meal. Think about our intestines. Our intestines in our body are really long. 
Intestines are where nutrients are absorbed. So all of your nutrients in your body, or in your food, are getting absorbed through your intestines and, and help fuel your body. Let's look at the oyster. Now, oysters aren't very big, um, but this oyster, compared to ours, the intestines aren't very long. Their body's kind of small inside of that, uh, that shell, and they don't have a lot of room for a lot of intestines. So a lot of times the nutrients don't get absorbed. So whenever they poop, a lot of times the poop will get uh, back into their gills and they will redigest their poop so they can make sure to get all the nutrients out of it. It kind of helps them to be able to use as least energy as possible. You get a lot of animals like uh, crabs and worms and all kinds of different stuff that will actually live on oyster reefs and choose to be around the oysters so they can eat the oyster poop because oyster poop in the ocean is delicious and nutritious. So we have our stomach, our intestines, and we have our liver right here. Now, this one's kind of a hard concept to grasp. Invertebrates have copper-based blood. So this is green for a reason. Invertebrates have copper-based blood. We have iron-based blood. So if you think about how iron uh, will rust and you have this rusty color in iron, it kind of looks like the red color in our blood, right? Oysters have copper-based blood. So if you have a penny and you leave it out for a while, what color does it get? It gets green, right? So oysters will actually have copper-based blood. So their blood is actually green. So if you've ever squished a bug before and you've seen guts and all this kind of goopy stuff out of it and it's kind of green, kind of brown, the, all this stuff in it, that's actually the organs mixed with the blood. Oysters also have an open circulatory system. So you can look at your arm and you can see that our blood is contained in veins and arteries, right? Oysters don't have veins or arteries. They have an open circulatory system. Now they don't have as much blood as we do in their body as a total, but they do have their blood free flowing in their body, kind of swishing around. They do have a heart. They have a two chambered heart and this two chambered, chambered heart will pump uh, the kind of plump, uh, pump oxygenated blood throughout the body. And this liver right here is what cleans the blood. It's kind of like this big kind of blood storage cleaning bath area. So they do have blood. It's not enclosed in veins and arteries. It's an open circulatory system that's free flowing throughout the oyster's body. Just like I said, whenever you squish a bug or anything like that, you get all this goopy stuff out of it. That's the blood and the organs mixed all together. So kind of crazy. Of course, we have our muscle that opens and closes the oyster. Now, this part right here is pretty cool. It's called the palp, and that's where the oyster makes the pearl. Oysters do make pearls. They have a soft body, so whenever they get anything irritating like a sand grain or a piece of plastic or anything like that in their palp, in their soft body, they want to cover it up with something that's smooth. And they have all this calcium carbonate in their body, so why not just use that? So what oysters do whenever they get a sand grain or a rock or something kind of hard and that doesn't, they don't want to eat it, but it's stuck in this palp area, they'll cover it up with more and more calcium carbonate. Whenever they cover this up, it starts to smooth it over. Think about if you got a piece of sand in your eye. Hopefully that's never happened to you. But whenever you get something in your eye, it's irritating and you just want to get it out. Oysters can't really purge that out, so what they do is they cover it up with calcium carbonate to make it very smooth. And whenever they do this, they also create a calcium carbonate storage. Remember I said oysters have growing seasons and they have seasons where they're just not getting a lot of calcium carbonate through the water? During these seasons where they aren't getting a lot of calcium carbonate and they need to grow a little bit, they can take some of that calcium carbonate from that pearl and be able to uh, cover their uh, their shell a little bit more to evade predators. So it is actually a benefit for an oyster to produce these pearls. Now, our oysters that we have in Galveston are Eastern oysters, scientific name Crassostria virginica. With our oysters that we have here, they don't make very pretty uh, pearls. The pearls that make, they make uh, kind of look more like rocks. And these pearls that they make, these kind of rocky looking like pearls are more benefit to a dentist because whenever people eat uh, oysters sometimes they can get these pearls stuck in their um, 
they can get these pearls stuck in their teeth and bite down and really hurt themselves. So they look more kind of like rocks than actual pearls that you think that you get in the store. Oysters are so much more than they seem on the outside, right? They just have this kind of weird looking shell. All oysters look different. Every shell grows at different rates, different shapes of where it's set and where it's chose to set onto. And so every oyster is going to look a little bit different. But on the inside, oysters are a lot more complicated than someone would think. So I hope you guys learned to appreciate the oysters today and hopefully oysters became your favorite animal too.